After conducting primary assessment and determining that the patient has negative pulse and negative breathing, perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation. CPR is a series of 30 chest compressions plus two rescue beds. It is given when both the breathing and pulse rate of the patient are abnormal or non-existent. In CPR, the chest compressions and rescue beds make sure that blood is still partially circulating throughout the body and that oxygen gets to the brain. After assessing the patient's vitals and before performing CPR, announce negative pulse, negative breathing, I will now perform CPR. To perform CPR, first ensure that the patient is in a firm, flat surface. Second, stand by the torso of the patient and make sure that there is space between your knees for stability. Third, position your hands effectively. Identify the center of the lower sternum of the patient using your fingers and place the heel of one hand on this location. Interlace the fingers of your other hand on top of the first. Do not rest your finger on the patient's chest. Fourth, position your body effectively such that your shoulders are directly over your hands. Make sure to keep your arms straight and your elbows locked. Fifth, begin chest compressions by pushing down on the chest with a straight up and down motion. The force should come from your upper body and not just your arms. It is more effective and less tiring to use more of your body weight than your muscular strength. Allow the chest to return to its normal position before pushing for another compression. The depth of chest compression should be 2 inches for adults, 1.5 inch for children. In giving its chest compression, make sure that the people around you can hear you counting to 30. Counting must start from 1 to 20, then start over from 1 up to 9. Announce the last number as the set of chest compressions you are now in. 1 for the first set of 30, 2 for the second set of 30, and so on. Keep the chest compressions at a constant rhythm that is at 100 to 120 beats per minute. Six, open the airway. Go back to a stable position and perform the head tilt chin lift maneuver to open the patient's airway. Alternatively, you may use the jaw thrust maneuver when head, neck, or spinal injury is suspected. When a pocket mask is available, seal the mask over the patient's mouth and nose simultaneously while performing the head tilt chin lift maneuver. Perform two rescue breaths. Pinch the nose of the patient to prevent air escape, then give a rescue breath. Unpinch the nose to let the air out and observe for the falling of the chest before giving another rescue breath. In giving rescue breaths, make sure that your mouth covers the whole mouth of the patient and if you have a pocket mask, the edges are sealed over the mouth and nose. Each breath should last one second enough to make the chest rise. After two rescue breaths, Go back immediately to chest compressions. Interruptions to chest compressions should be minimized to less than 10 seconds. When to stop giving CPR? You will continue performing sets of CPR until 1. Signs of life become present. 2. Trained personnel takes over the situation. 3. Operator becomes too tired to perform CPR. 4. Physician declares the person dead. And five, scene becomes unsafe. Use the mnemonic stops in remembering when to stop giving CPR. When the patient has positive pulse but negative breathing, rescue breaths are performed. Rescue breaths are ventilations given to supply oxygen to the patient. Rescue breaths are given to ensure that the blood of the patient still carries oxygen for the body. It is given when the breathing of the patient is non-existent or is not normal, but the pulse rate is normal. Rescue breaths are given every 5 seconds. Check for vitals after every set. 